Welcome to Chop Shop Motors. My name is Clay, and tonight it's a beautiful Friday evening. Uh, weather's gorgeous here in Arizona, and there's not too much on the to do list that has to happen tonight. So, tonight I'm out in the shop and I'm going to do a little work on the 32 here. As we progress along, I'm starting to figure out kind of what I'm going to do on the front brakes and get those pieces sourced. Now it's time to put the drop front spring under it and get a feel for is the spring going to drop it the right amount? Does it feel like it's going to work right? We might get a fender out and set it up on it just to see if you know good things are happening. And once the front spring's in it and we kind of have that figured out, I can look at a couple other areas that are kind of next on the uh, next on the list. One being, what am I going to do for front shocks? And the other is, let's get a steering box mounted and make it so we can uh, steer it. Let's. Let's do a dive in and enjoy a little evening out in the shop. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this thing jacked up and get it off of the block on this side and get some check stands in there. Okay, so we're nine and a quarter to the front bolt on the spreader bar, Florida center, that front bolt, nine and a quarter. So, I'll jot that down and reference that way. With the radiator out of the way, you can see the front cross member has been modified a bit to lower uh, the front of the car. So it had probably at least an inch and a half, if not an inch and three quarters, uh, modified out so that it will, will basically get that draw in the cross member. So we're going to be closer to the ground and the right height that we want before we ever get a drop spring in it. So now what I'll do is I'll pull those shackle bolts out, we'll get the spring loose, and then we'll proceed to pull the spring off of the front axle. So let me get you back in the truck off. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna pull this front spring loose. Um, to get the front of the cross member as low as possible, we basically changed to uh, put tubing on the outside of the cross member and put bolts through it so we didn't have the U-bolt that was going to kill some of our height. So that's why it looks a little different. Everything was being mocked together, so some of the bolts were a little bit, uh, a little bit longer than they need to be. And we'll fix those as we get the final bolt together and work it. This is the lower plate, super heavy duty, uh, probably overkill for a passenger car. That was what was originally on the big truck that the front frame came off of. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay, we'll pull the shack cloth and see if we can get it apart without putting it up in the area.
Okay, let's pull off this other shackle. So we can get this spring to slide out of here. to spring and then I'll put it, in, put it in inventory and later when I need it I'll know what it is. Okay now got this new front spring. The difference is is this is a reverse die spring. So Flip this around so I can see what I'm showing you. So right here at the end, the spring curls up so that it drops the car a little bit. Where the old spring, this curled down and raised the car a little bit. So that is the spring we're going to use now. So this is an aftermarket late spring. Um, nothing vintage about this. If it's vintage, it's only because I've had it for a while. So there is an adapter or a tool guys make for reverse tied springs to get them um, to spread them. But I haven't gotten around to making one and I don't have one. So for the front, we're going to see if we can cheat it a little bit. Okay. So this is the new one here. This is a vintage older style an older original um, shackle kit that I had purchased. So it's a little different style than some you might see. Well, it seems to work. Kind of fits the build a little bit. Okay, so put this together here. And getting the first one on on one side is pretty pretty easy. For the most part. So all of this is going to come apart few more times and I know that but we're trial fitting pieces in the parts to see how everything's gonna work and is it gonna work okay. Let's 
going to get something to pull that spring up while we slide it together. start to push this together the pin in the middle of the spring has to fall into the detent in the middle of the cross member area and so first we really just have to get this shackle together I could probably not going really to worry too much about that and we'll just fight the shackle. So first things first. Right, so we changed our tactics a little bit. We got the spring centered in the cross member, pulled it up, and put the bolts on to actually secure it into that front cross member. So now what we'll do is we'll see if we can start to uh, finesse it into the actual shackle port here. So let's see what happens. And I am going to cheat that a little bit on that side. I'm going to see if I can put something between the spring and the uh, pickup point for that shackle so that the spring doesn't slide all the way up under that. I need it to be as long as possible. So This is where having lots of miscellaneous tools does pay a dividend. But, I'll show you the problem I'm running into. So without a spring spreader, it's hard to get that spring to lay out um, flat enough to be able to get these to line up. So we'll have to keep messing with that. And uh, what I might do actually is clamp 
I have a big enough clamp, I might clamp the axle to the cross member and start to pull it together that way. So let's give that a shot. All right, so we're back at it. And we have the spring finesse up in there. And the shackles are attached to the axle. Now we're going to pull the clamps off. helps to have some big clamps to be able to pull some stuff together here. I've got a socket in there that I need to get out. Let's see if I can just lift up on this enough. Can you lift up on this enough to perfect. So we're all together more or less. Tighten up this shackle a little bit just so nothing can squirt off. Just uh, wanted to park. All right. So let's get you a little closer look. So that is the dropped reverse diet spring in place. You can see it sits a little um, nicer angle than that other 32 spring. My guess is is that. Um, that other spring had probably sagged a little bit so when we're all said and done we might not gain all that much with this spring at least initially but it will settle a little bit after it sets with the weight of the motor and stuff on it so let's put uh, put you back up here and we'll do a quick measure Okay, so it is, I think it was nine and a quarter, and now it's 11 and, 11 and a quarter. So it's substantially higher. And um, I guess I'm not really too surprised initially. We'll see where it goes after it settles with the weight of that 292 on it. My guess is it's probably gonna come down a little bit. We'll keep measuring it. Um, next thing we want to do. Um, next step will probably be figure out what we're going to do for shocks on the front. So we've got a, a few options that we can start to look at. Um, kind of thinking out loud here. Set this up so chat here. Let's 
So probably the next thing we'll do is we'll tack the, now that the spring's in it, we can start to uh, kind of figure out what I need to worry about the, with that spring. Uh, we have another option or two with the spring. If it is still too high, we can pull a leaf or two. It's got a pretty thick uh, top leaf in it that we can pull out and we can gain a pretty fast, uh, probably three quarters of an inch because you're gonna gain, uh, that spring is, is really quite thick, so you might gain three to an inch in the spring, and then you're gonna gain how much it lets the car settle. So uh, we'll, we could probably make a, a jump there, which we'll play with. I'm not, I don't really wanna mess with it too much around ride height right now, because there are just so many other pieces that aren't on the car that will pull the front end down. So the, once the radiator's in it and it's full of water and you get exhaust on it, you get a steering box and linkage and shocks, all that stuff starts to bring that front end down. And uh, so we'll kind of leave it where it's at right now. I'll probably pull one of the fenders out of the rafters and uh, the next piece will be put a fender on it and see just exactly what does it look like. Um, with a fender to tire clearance because that's if it's a mile off then we can probably do some work to get it closer right now but if it's in the ballpark then uh, probably won't worry too much about it. It really changes the direction of the car when you're shifting from doing a high boy no fenders to putting fenders on it. How the tires sit inside the fenders make all the difference of how the car looks. So. That's probably the effort for tonight. Thanks for following along. And on this, especially on this journey of this 32, it's gonna be kind of slow, but we'll keep, we'll keep plucking away. The goal is to eventually get it running. And uh, so you can't do it if you're not out here wrenching. I'm Clay for Chop Shop Motors. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you will. Follow us along on this project and we'll see you on the next project.